Uh, well, welcome back to the final segment here on Talking Sports. And uh, at this juncture, we invite Simone Edwards. Now, some of you may know who Simone Edwards is. She's the first Jamaican to play in the WNBA, which is the women's NBA in the United States. She used to represent Seattle Storms, a former champion as well. I think way back in 2004, I think it was, um, nicknamed the Jamaican Hurricane. She was known to be a Jamaican, but the name Hurricane tells you that she was a very um, passionate, forceful player. She joins us uh, right here for a few. Uh, Simone, how you doing? Good, man. Has been, been a while. Has been a while. I haven't seen you. Um, retired these days, not a lot of um, prominent athletes want to come back and give back the way that you're choosing to give back with this learning center up, up in, I think it's August Stone. Yeah, yeah, tell, us, yeah. tell us a little bit more about it. Well, you know, like I say, I, I don't know about other athletes, but, you know, when you grow up um, in Jamaica, I just feel like you're not obligated, but I feel like I have to go back and have, especially young girls, right. you know, see that, you know, their present circumstances does not dictate their future. So they have to see me and say, oh, you, oh man, you did it? So I can. It right. don't have to be the WNBA, but to know that they can, even though they're living in poverty, some of them, that they can go as high and break barriers like I did. Mm. Before we ask about the center itself, people may be looking on, seeing in this nice Jamaican jersey, we're, we're showing shots now of um, the, the NBA the WNBA. Tell us a little bit about your WNBA career. First Jamaican ever to play um, professional basketball at that level in the, in the United States. T for example, this shot that we're looking at, um, well, they, they, they've moved past it. But um, how did you get in the WNBA? Um, you know, I, I went to a trial because my last year in um, college, I was coming back from knee injury. I wasn't drafted. Mm -hmm. So I had to go to New York. I went to the tryout in New York. There was over 300 girls. They only needed two players. Wow. And I was one of them that made it. And that was the New York Liberty. That was the, the inaugural season of the WNBA. Right. Did you play basketball in Jamaica at all? Or was it just I just learned for a year. So mm -hmm. they really, I would learn the game for a year. The guy offered me a scholarship when I was just doing track. And uh, he said, you learn the game, we'll mm -hmm. give you a scholarship. And I was a poor kid. I knew I couldn't go so to college. So you did track in Jamaica? Yeah, I was a at, sprinter. At, at Katie, I was champion girl at Kingston Tech for four years. Oh, as a sprinter? As a sprinter, 100. yeah, 102. And then you took up, how did you got introduced to basketball? Um, I was coming from the stadium. It was um, during the girls' champion thing. And mm. I lost a race was for, for the first time I never used it. <laughs> but yeah. the country girls were so much faster. So I was just sad going home, and two coaches called me. Um, it was a white coach from University of Oklahoma and a local coach. Keep daily, and they said, you're fast, you know, you're tall, why don't you learn basketball? And we give, I didn't even know what basketball was at the time. My Lord. I was like, a scholarship? Okay, I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I right. had, you know, another year in high school, I was, you know, I didn't know what to do with my life, and there was a scholarship. And so the local coach kept there to say, just come to practice with me, and I'll teach you the game. And that's what I did. Didn't have any school, um, basketball shoes or clothes. I used to go up there from KT. I either had to walk there and walk home to Augustown because I only had one bus fare. So I was out there in the sun just oh. going because I know I needed to change my situation. Um, without getting into the entire story, you must have done pretty well in the... In the um, you must have learned pretty quickly because yes. you, 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 you got into the WNBA. One in 2004. In 2004. The Seattle Storms. Yes, the championship. Um, tell us about that. How, how did that feel? Oh, my gosh. You know, um, the first three years in Seattle, it was like we were just winning six... 16 games, and then all of a sudden, we won the championship. And it was, the crowd was over 20,000 people in the gym. It was just amazing. Mm. And, and again, it's making history, and I love making history. Right. All right, so you're now, you have not retired for how long? Um, um, since without, I don't want to date or age you or anything like well, that. Well, no, I'm not afraid of that. But <laughs> um, I last played, but not in the WNBA, was in 2006, I think. But for overall, I was playing for Jamaica up until 2013. Then I started coaching the national team in 2014, where I won a championship with Jamaica. All right, great. So not just a WNBA player, but a former national yes. coach as well. All right, and what is it that prompted you now to decide that you want to open a, a, a center? And, um, and what exactly will be done there? I've always had my nonprofit, Simone for Children, because I always said if I make it, I will always give back to my community. So, so I've always had so you're admitting to making it. To making it. In terms, well, you know, getting <laughs> right, to that I, next I, level. I, I'm just I, I, saying, I you know. Yeah, but you know. Um, so what I did was 
I well, I've always helped kids um, from a distance, you know, getting scholar um, in terms of school and different things. And now I wanted a center. I think that's the best thing because a lot of these kids they need help with their homework, right? Are are getting ready for their CXC and stuff. So I just finished it, and um, we're still trying to bring in funding and everything to keep it going. But uh, you know, all these kids are coming in, getting help with their school. So work. it's actually something that has started. It started Tuesday. I opened. I had the grand opening on Tuesday. That's um, yeah, Tuesday gone. Tuesday gone. And um, what age will be catered to? From four up. Four From four. Old, up. Yeah. And it, it, it doesn't matter. And we do CXC classes. So you do. Mm -hmm. Well, reading, because at four years old, not, not too many people would be able to read. So that is part of it. And I have some little tablets for the kids to learn from. So how many, how many people, they write and they learn to spell. Right. How many people do you hope to cater to? Um, well, we registered 53 people Tuesday. Wow. And I know a lot more will come through. And today you had about 20 kids coming for their homework. Where, you know, we mm. have homework from three to five. Then the, la the um, of from six to eight will be the CXC class, you know, getting help. Right. So do you have do you have um, teachers coming in to help? Um, yes, I have this so great guy, Hurl Solomon. That's the main one. That is physics, um, chemistry, biology, and then we have other people volunteering. We have Marvin Facey, who is going to um, um, run the mentorship program for girls, and mm. we have something for the boy. We have all these things we're trying to. We just want the kids to have a place to go after school. At right. least for a few hours, where they're focused not just on schoolwork, but we're going to strengthen their mind, their self-esteem. We're just trying to build them. We want them to be, you know, that next generation. We want them to be better. It's a it's a remarkable effort. And and, and how often do you interact with it with the students? I know you're talking about the this the side of getting them to read and getting to learn with CXCs and so on. But you're also talking about the mentorship, especially for young girls. And there's a lot that I know you can impart to young females. Um, how how often are you directly interacting? Well, today, what, today because we opened on Tuesday, um, today I was in there with him, with the four-year-olds, you know, trying to write the C cat and just going through with them, helping him out with, um, with that. And I want to do more, but Jamaica, I just, I'm hoping that they'll present me with a position here that I can be home more to do more for the kids. Right. I, I just want to do more. It, it's just, but also you have to be able to survive. So I want, I'm hoping that within the ministry, I can get something in sport or something that I can still be here mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. looking for, and I can do more for the kids, but we're looking forward to it. Um, people looking on who may want their kids to be involved, how, how, do, they, how do they get through to you? Oh, we have my organization, Simone for Children, the number four, my name, the number four children.org. Um, we will have things on there, how to reach, um, you know, reach us and how to get to... Um, get in the program. Right. But it's in so, August down um, at the are, you, are you on any social media platforms for people? Yes. For um, people? Yes. Jam, J-A-M Hurricane, at Jam Hurricane, J-A-M Hurricane. Um, mm -hmm. That's how. And JamaicanHurricane.com is my, the Jamaica, JamaicanHurricane.com is All right. my. So the, um, <laughs> look up JamaicanHurricane.com. Yeah. Um, do you have a number for the, for the, for the um, center that you could give out? Yes. Um, I'll have, right now, I do not have a number for we just going so we're getting um, a number now. The only number I have, I okay, have all right, probably, but I will probably, make probably, sure. Right, right. Um, and um, what what time of the day uh, do you have in mind, and, and how often for the week do you would you prepare to cater for the young? Well, we're going from Monday to Friday with the homework five days a week. Um, from three to five, we'll have kids, the younger kids, mm -hmm. and then six to eight, we have the older kids. But, okay. you know, it's and a mix. It's, it's every day. It's every day. Every and then on day. Sunday, it's mostly going to be the mentorship program when we know that kids are in. Um, and, and what exactly will the mentorship program come Well, you know, it's really about um, building, focusing on, especially young girls and boys, about learning respect, about building their self-esteem, because I think that's one of the major to know that their self-worth mm -hmm. and value. So uh, we want, we're trying to build that. We're trying to teach them a lot of different things. We have a social worker, um, we have a lot of sports psychology. We have a lot of people on board. Mm -hmm. And I want to take them on trips eventually so they can see different parts of the island, learn a little bit more about because a lot of them haven't been you know, outside of it in the terms of, you know, right, just learning right, more. So right. there's a lot of things we have planned again. With Will there be any basketball training? I'm yeah. glad you asked it, 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 that. We have a that. court. Listen, that's <laughs> the thing. There's a court down there, but it's so damaged, and I need sponsorship to get a new court. If I can get a court, sports is what brought bring the community together. And there's a field for football that needs fixing too, but... 
the basketball, I was there with the guys today being the ref, and they're so respectful. And all these guys, these local young men, were on there playing three and three, and I was refing. And, and it's just, everybody just came out sitting on the wall, and we were just having a good time. And mm -hmm. I want to fix that court, because I think way I can do a lot of clinics. I can have other former players coming down, and we can bring the community together. Right. And I think sports always bring communities together. A lot, a, a lot of athletes who went away and played professionally, and not just in basketball, but in, in other sports, and who had such a prominence um, in another country, wouldn't necessarily want to come back home and, and get involved, especially with, let's face it, kids who are not necessarily from the, the upper echelons of the society, but, you know, um, grassroots people. What, what is it that is driving you to want to, not just to come back home, but to work with with kids at that level? I was one of those kids. Oh, you were one of those kids. I grew up in the community. I grew up poor. I, 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 I know what it feels like. Mm. And so when you're around a kid and you, and, and you just know what you needed then, but also now when you look at a kid and you said, it's not, not because this kid is poor doesn't mean this kid doesn't have a potential. This kid can be anything they want, a doctor, a lawyer. Yeah, yeah. So it's not based on just where they are. So I have to do my part in trying to give them that uh, opportunity. Was there, it, uh, it, this must have been a thought in your head, um, clearly, because they say most, most actions start with a thought. So this is clearly something that you would have been thinking about. But was there a particular incident or a particular event that made you say, Simone, I have to go through this center and, and, and try to help the kids. Yes, one time I came home and I had some bags. Um, I brought them some bags, some knapsack, and I was giving it to the kids. And there's this one little girl, and um, she ran up to me and she said, my have pretty bag, my have pretty oh <laughs> And when she said that, I was that such a simple thing changed her life. Just this little bag that, you know, it cost hardly anything. And she was like, and I was like, can you imagine if you can bring more to these kids' life? Oh, excited. You know, they haven't you know, the ones that really need it. And from then on, I said, I just want it. I want to give more, as, as right. much as I can. And I, I, I know I need a lot of help to, in doing so, but I did my part with what I can do. I started that without, but to continue and to up growing, I need help. Right. Um, well, we, well, have you been making um, overtures to, um, like, members of parliament or um, the SDF or... I'm Sports definitely minister. going to, because I have a lot of respect. You know who has been one of my biggest help? Food for the Poor. Right. Um, they have been my help from day one. And I, I, I mean, I just love Food for the Poor because of their efforts. But, I, you know, um, and I know that that's something I'm going to also bring to Minister Grant, because she's someone that have always supported me when I was part of basketball in mm. terms of national coaching. And, um, and so I'm, I'm going to approach. I just wanted to start the sense because sometimes people have to see what you, you know, so you can say. It, but right, I want right. to say I started it. Right. These kids are in it now. What can you do to help right. me keep it going? Sports changed you. Yes. How? Because it was my way out of poverty. Sports was my way out. I, I, was, I wasn't passionate about basketball when I started. I just see it as a way out. Mm. And with my, within my first year playing basketball overseas, I became All-American. Those kids have been playing for years. That's because my focus was uh, you had that drive. I had to drive. Yes. You knew that this was life. Yes, and just like for the tryout. Yeah. You know, I knew I had to. I had the knees. I didn't have a name then. My knee was but I had to make it. Mm. And so that's, I use sport as a way, and I want to do that here, too, because there's so much talent. They don't have to be the next a WNBA player or, or a pro football player, but they can, they can get scholarship. But it also builds like self-esteem, teach them about teamwork. There are a lot of things that people play sport can help them in the next, in, 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 for just in their job. It's good to at least, because we're so competitive, we're also committed. Mm. So, yeah. Um, the, I have to ask you, you, you were sitting across from where we were when we had that very contentious issue about Westerners cricket. Now, you know the issue. We were discussing it at the start of the program. Your thoughts on a player retiring? I mean, you would have played basketball at the very highest level for women in the United States. Um, could your dislike for a president mean that you, 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 you said, no, I don't want to play? I've been there, done that. Um, where <laughs> this like, but, you know, but for me personally, I wasn't playing for it, but I was playing for Jamaica, you yeah. know. And so I just continued playing. And even though I, we went through a lot of crap as player, I'm, I'm looking at the football team, what they're going to do, well, basketball we did. Right. And um, I continued playing because it wasn't about me, just what it was about. I'm representing my country. Wonderfully said. All right, Simone, I, I have a minute. I usually <laughs> like to give my guests their final 10 seconds That's fine. to say whatever they want to say to the public. In case I was asking stupid questions, there are something that you want to say that <laughs> I didn't ask about. So you, you look into the, the camera right there, and you have 10 seconds. Well, I just want to say that... Um, 
again, I want to give back to my country. It's, it's always my pride, and I just need the, all the help I can get. So please, my fellow Jamaicans, um, help me to help change these lives. So visit my website, jamaicanhurricane.com. Contact me at Jam um, Hurricane on, um, on Instagram, and help me change these lives. Thank you. All right. Can't say it any better than that. Thank you very much for being a part of Talking Sports. Thanks very much to the team and the production team, Daniel and the crew. Thanks to you for joining us um, for the show this week. Join us next week, same time, same place. Wayne Walker will be back to do it um, for you next week. And as always, pleasant viewing. I am the greatest.